Hi Trinity Rock and Pop Drummers, hope you're well. Right, quick talk through for you here. I've come together by the Beatles, of course, from Trinity Rock and Pop Drums, grade four. Um, this is an absolute classic, needless to say, it's from a classic record as well, Abbey Road, first track on that. If it's not my favorite Beatles record, it's definitely my favorite Ringo record. Unbelievable, brilliant drumming on there. The track after this is something, uh, one of the most beautiful, beautiful drum parts uh, I've ever heard. If you think, if people who think drumming is just about keeping a beat, listen to something, man. That's every little moment on that enhances and lifts the song and takes it where it's going. It's something, something brilliant, I think. This has come together. I think in terms of the Beatles, this is about as funky as it gets. Let's give it a go from the top. It goes in the intro. Then you've got a little semi quaver triplet with a quaver at the end, and then a sextuplet or semi quaver triplets on the mid tom, and then on the floor tom, four more notes, semi quaver triplet with a quaver at the end. One time again. Orchestration around the Thomas might be ever so slightly different from that, but that would totally that would totally work with the original. Then the verse kicks in. Nice and straightforward. Driving along here, four on the floor with the kick drum. One, two, three, four. On the floor, Tom. Eighth notes of quavers. One and two and three and four. And on the music it says strong four feel. So just emphasizing the beat. Nice and simple. The end of that is a little two bar a kick drum solo. It goes like this. So a dotted quaver and then a semi quaver. That figure features a lot. That's like the first and the last, the four sixteenth notes. So sixteenth notes, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. At the start there we've got one E and a, the first and the last of four semi quavers. And then on the beat for beat two, one E and a, two. Repeat in the second half of the bar, three E and a four. Again, that little section. Then you've got the repeat mark, right? So that's going to take you all the way back to the intro. So all the same stuff again. Back to the verse. And eventually, two bar kick drum solo. Next bit is the chorus. It goes up in dynamic here. We've been at MF, mezzo forte, sort of moderate volume. I think of that as being sort of default volume on the drums, about 45 degrees with the stick, something like this. Uh, in the chorus here, forte, we're going to play strong. Simple as that, man. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. I'll do that again. Simple as that. Then we go back to the intro. So hopefully you're seeing here, it's all quite sort of formulaic, isn't it? There's the intro groove, there's the first groove, there's the little two bar kick drum solo before the chorus, there's the chorus, and then it just goes back to the intro again. So all of that, so far so good. Remember at the beginning we do the intro and the verse, you repeat those sections because of the little repeat marks, then you do the chorus, then you do the intro groove again, then you do another verse. And you just keep going in that manner. Really, there's another chorus after that, uh, another little intro groove. Now, when you get to the chorus the second time, bars 29 and 30, it's as if the, the intro is going to play again, but. <laughs> this little drum fill is going to lead you into the instrumental now. Let's have a look at this. This is bar 30. Uh, this time, that little phrase. Every time up to now, that's gone around four times, hasn't it? And in this particular section, just before the instrumental, again by 29.30, what happens is you only do one of these, and then we do one that starts off as if it's going to be another one, 
It then launches into a little two beat drum fill. So this is beats three and four of bar 30. It goes. <laughs> comes the whole of bar 30. One, two, figure there. Two high toms, two mid toms, two floor toms. Well, it's the rhythm three E A. Uh, so like three E and A uh, without the and. Semi quaver, quaver, semi quaver, three E A. Uh, and then the rhythm of four E and, which is uh, two semi quavers and a quaver, four E and. I'm going to play from the start of the chorus at 27, those four bars, the first line of the second page. Here we go. Now do that one time again. to the instrumental at 31. Now here, we're riding on the crash. Groove goes like this. but the orchestration on the kit is slightly different. This one, which is bar 34, goes. So you've got, this time the first three notes on the high tom, the next two on the mid tom, then one on the floor tom. So bar 34 goes. Okay, hopefully this is all making a bit of sense. The one thing I want to say about this section, I always think, is it's easy to get really heavy, man. And this one is, on the face of it, it's a rock tune, I suppose, but it's like psychedelic, sort of groovy, funky rock, I would say. So just, I think, just keep a little bit of a lid on it if you can. It's so easy when you see a crash bass groove to go. But this, you know, this isn't Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day. This is, you know, come together. It's got that smoothness and that sort of restrained uh, rock groove to it. Makes a bit of sense. Obviously, massively listen to well, first of all, the demo version that comes with the audio here, but also Ringo on the original man. It's a really sort of smooth, laid back, again, groovy uh, performance. Cool. So the instrumental now continues. We're talking about bar 35. Now, here we can start to throw in some of our own drum fills. Again, listen to the original, listen to what Ringo's doing. It's all pretty simple. It's generally speaking, single stroke roll style fills. Uh, so for something like 35. too fancy here. I definitely think you don't get any bonus points for suddenly turning around the kit. Often drummers see the word fill and they think, right, drum solo, let's go. But you've got to play here in context. I mean, let's, you know, let's respect the original. It's an awesome bit of playing. It's an amazing piece of music. Let's keep that vibe going, you know, play in context with, with that. Right, here's the big thing. We've then got a drop out when we hit that crash at the start of bar, uh, whatever that is, 35, 36, 39. Now you've got these words, D, S, Al, Coda. This sort of stuff is the thing I get asked about the most. This means you go all the way back to the verse at bar 19. So dal segno, which means go back to the sign. The sign is the thing at the start of bar 19, above the music that looks kind of like a funny dollar sign, you know that? It means you jump back to that point. It's like a, it's a form of repeat, right? So you play the instrumental all the way through, 31, all the way through to 39. You hit your crash symbol, you drop out, and then you wait for two bars, so it's two bars rest, and then you come in, DS al coda, at bar 19 again, hopefully that's making sense. You jump from the end of bar 40 to the start of bar 19. So in other words, you do another verse. Now, this is funny because we're in a weird world, I was thinking, with these drum grades. When the, you know, when the Beatles are writing this, one thing I can guarantee is that Lennon didn't go, right boys, you know what, DS Alcoda. He just said, let's do another verse. 
and then we're in this sort of strange world here where which is an awesome world it's basically where we're doing these drum grades and it's sort of learning the skills which traditionally are associated with like classical playing so reading music following apart that kind of stuff which are awesome skills in, in popular music as well um, but we're applying it to you know pop music contemporary music so that means you go from again bar 40 all the way back to 19 hit the groove the, uh, for the verse the verse is exactly the same as before you play through you do your little two bar uh, kick drum solo you do an, yet another chorus now after the two bar chorus 27 and 28 the second time around on the DS as musicians say you then have the phrase Takoda written above the music and a little thing that looks like a crosshair if you ever played a video game where you're a fighter pilot looks like that that means you have to go from that point in the music and jump to where the, the coda is so if you look down halfway down the second page there's a, the little crosshair again and it says the word coda so let's recap from the beginning of the song you're going to play the intro and the verse and you're going to follow the repeat mark there do the intro the verse again you're then going to do the chorus you're then going to do the, in, the little intro bit again and now the verse now you go to the second page do the chorus do the little intro bit with two just two bars this time with the drum fill you go to the instrumental you play all the way through that you do ds alcoda taking you back to bar 19 to the verse hopefully you're following this you play through that and the two bars of the chorus 27 and 28 again for the second time you are now going to jump from the end of bar 28 to the start of bar 41 so you're going from one little crosshair coda thing to the other okay i'm going to start from bar 27 the second time around top of the second page one bar 41. And at that point we've got, as you can hear, 41, 42, 43, 44, which is exactly the same uh, drum fill that we had at bar 30. So lots of the same ideas, again it's quite formulate, lots of the same ideas coming around. We're almost there, we're now into the outro at 45. This is a straight playthrough to the end now. No funny business with repeats. This just goes. and loose nice and relaxed no extra prizes for tearing around the kit there suddenly playing at 100 miles an hour just keep it groovy um, on the original give it a listen man especially in the groove Ringo does a little thing where he plays like a little swung skippy note uh, in the main groove <laughs> So in the diagonal slashes, which mean continue similar, you might even consider putting that into your groove, uh, just to sort of give it a feel of the uh, original. Nice, simple drum fills, and then you're done. Crash to finish on beat one, double bar line means it's the end. Um, I hope that was useful. It's a, just a little talk through what is a brilliant, brilliant piece of music. You might have noticed it's not quite the original version, but all of this stuff will totally work along with the original, and it's a, you can totally extrapolate from this into the original. Thanks a million. Any questions, give us a shout. Thanks so much. Um, also, really appreciate you watching these videos. I hope they're helpful. Um, really appreciate your feedback, especially about these these ones, because rather than just being like plays through the tunes, it's something a bit different. It's quite fun just to have a little talk through it and explore uh, this. And if it's useful, could you let me know, please? I'll make some more of these. If you just prefer like playthroughs of the songs, that's totally fine as well. Uh, I'll do a bit more of that. But your your feedback is always appreciated. Thanks so much. See you soon. Thanks a million.